Good evening, Red Devil fans. This is Bruce Beggs along with Neil Reed here at Buddy Buffett Stadium at Lincoln County High School. And we'd like to welcome you to tonight's game between the Lincoln County Red Devils and the Warren County Screaming Devils. Neil? Bruce, how you doing tonight? Neil, I'm doing good tonight. It's a good night for football. It's a crisp fall night. The air's got a little chill in it, and it seems like football weather. We uh, see now the... The coin toss has just taken place, and Neil, you're going to tell us what's happened. Yes, yeah, sir. It looks like the Red Devils have won the toss and have elected to receive. Uh, Warren County will be defending the goal toward the gym, which is our east goal. I'm, I'm glad you clarified that, <laughs> Neil. I was worried about the direction that I was going to have to go talk to Jim Madison, who is on the sidelines with chains. We don't need to interrupt him from that, though. Tonight's captains were C.J. Norman, number nine, and Dante Parks, number 61. Uh, Dante is a junior. C.J. Norman is a 10th grader. So we're getting them ready to go. And Neil, as we get underway, we can see that we got a good crowd of uh, home fans here tonight to see this game between Lincoln County and Warren County. We want to remind everybody as we're getting underway tonight that our uh, broadcast is made possible by the city and county governments of Lincoln County and the city of Lincolnton. Uh, the Lincoln County Development Authority, the Lincoln County Chamber of Commerce, and with the special help and cooperation of the Lincoln County High School Technology Department. We're glad to have Paul King with us tonight, running our camera. He's new to us, but uh, we're sure we're going to break him in good tonight and teach him uh, to do a lot of those things that, that um, Coach Flowers told him not to do. <laughs> All right, looks like we're getting real close to going tonight. Bruce, we got a list of injuries here, and we'll talk about them as the night goes on. But here we go to kickoff, and it's a dribbler down the field. It's taken by number three, Chris Kreit, at the 27-yard line, and he downs the ball. It'll be first down, Red Devils, on the 27. And back to those injuries that we've talked about. Cordell Coppin has a chipped bone in his ankle and is not dressed out tonight. Gavin Williams has a knee injury, and he is dressed out tonight, and his uh, availability is questionable. Josh Beard, number 40, also has a knee injury. He's dressed out tonight and will be playing. But we've got Clark at quarterback, and he pitches to... Okay, we got a flea flicker, and Clark is throwing to Stephen Brown, who is all alone, and he will be down to the 19-yard line, and what a pass play that was. Neil, what a great play to start this ball game. Um, a great play, the flea flicker, as you said, and, and complete to Stephen Brown. And we've seen, seen Stephen Brown make some great plays throughout this season. I'm telling you, Stephen is one of the ones that, is, that has had some injury, uh, his knee injury, but obviously it wasn't hurting him on that play. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody quite that wide open. He was standing back there like a spectator. Well, he was, and I think it, I think it just totally caught the Screaming Devils off guard, off balance, and, and uh, he was just right out there in the open and just put us in excellent field position right here in the beginning seconds of this ball game. Flag on the play, and they call the timeout. It looks like illegal motion or illegal procedure on the Red Devils. It'll back us up five yards, be first and 15. On with the injuries a little bit, Brandon, uh, Brandon Barton, Brandon Reed, number 55, who's one of our star defensive players, suffering from a knee injury. He's not dressed out tonight. I understand he probably won't be back for another couple of weeks. And that's unfortunate because we've seen him make some great plays on this field and in, in, in other ball games. Also other injuries, we've got Alex Bradford who had an arm injury for quite some time. Alex is a freshman. Uh, and Brandon Barton has a broken finger. Touchdown, Clark. Uh, faked the ball to the running back on that play, kept the ball, and went around for the score. So it's Red Devils 6, Screaming Devils 0. 11 minutes and 9 seconds to go in the first quarter. <clears throat> and as I said earlier, Neil, a great way to start this ball game here tonight with a, uh, a good play by Stephen Brown and then the touchdown by Clark. And Josh Beard will attempt the point after. Good snap and a good kick. Uh, actually, the kick went off to the left. It looked good from our perspective. It looked good from our perspective, but I'm sure the officials had a better we will look at it than we did. And 
and since we have no choice, we will defer to the officials. So that'll bring our score up to, uh, looks like our scoreboard is not functioning properly, but um, we've had, uh, this is the night the lights went out in Georgia too, I believe, Bruce, because we've got a lot of lights on the numbers on our scoreboard out, and I hope we'll get that repaired. Okay, now, now, it looks like uh, that, uh, it's a, that's a modified six, so our score right here in the first quarter with 11 minutes and 9 seconds to play, 6 for Lincoln County Red Devils and 0 for the Screaming Devils. And Bruce, while we got a minute here, uh, Coach uh, Flowers gave me some heads up on some things going on with Warren County football. We have some uh, college scouts in the, in the crowd tonight. They're looking at number 74, Derek Cosby, who is a 12th grade linebacker. And they're also looking at number 88, Sherman Burnett, who is a 12th grade linebacker. And hopefully, while they're here looking they, at They'll them, just take a little gander at some of ours. They might. Red Devils. That's right. Okay. Lined up for the kickoff. And the short kick comes out to the 25-yard line, taken by number 40. He's got some room to run. And he cuts to the right and is finally finally brought down on the 45-yard line of the Red Devils. So the Screaming Devils have excellent field position to start with at the 45. So the Screaming Devils have come out screaming now. They sure have. Warren County has always played us tough. We, have, uh, we always have a hard time. Those guys like to pack a punch. They like to hit. And uh, it has definitely been tough games for us through the years. All right, uh, quarterback keeper, he goes off the right side for about four yards, five yards. We've got a number 40 at quarterback, and we also have an injured screaming devil. Who is he does up. get up with a little limp. Uh, Ball down by number 11, Stephen Brown, and another Red Devil defender that I didn't get the number or the name there. I was hoping that you were paying attention to that. I was absolutely not paying attention, but I will from now on. Well, try to do better. Second down and five. And the pitch to hand off to number 15 goes around the left side, and he's brought down by Laquino Mickens gets an arm on him, and then he has some help from somebody I couldn't see near. I believe that might have been number 58, Jarius Wynn. Neil, before our game got underway, we had an opportunity to witness uh, the um, senior recognition uh, where our senior players, um, senior cheerleaders, as well as our senior band members were recognized along with their escorts, and that was a great program. Third and three, quarterback keeper, and he goes nowhere, actually loses about three yards. He's brought down by Drum Long, Jarius Wynn, and number two, Jennings, Sean Tavius Jennings. Fourth down, then about five. Neil, don't forget to set your clock back this weekend. You know, daylight savings time begins on October the 26th. I'm, I'm looking forward to enjoying that extra hour that of extra sleep. Hour. Sure am. All right, what have we got going on We've got there? timeout, uh, Warren County. <clears throat> that first time out of the game. Neil, while we have this time out, we want to remind our viewers of some things that are going on in our community. On October the 30th, the Lincoln County Family Connection and the Lincoln County Recreation Department will host trick-or-treat egg hunt extravaganza. Now, that, and I told you last week, it sounds like, to, or the week before, whenever it was, I'll talk to you last, that it sounds like that they got the holidays mixed up with this egg hunt, but that should be an interesting twist on trick-or-treat. That'll take place beginning at 6.30 p.m. in the Lincoln County Recreation Department on Roland York Road. Every child must bring a flashlight. Every child will win prizes. If you need more information on that, you can call the Recreation Department office or you can call the Family Connection office and they'll tell you all about it. Okay. Uh, back to football. We have got Traveris Stokes back inside 
or at his 10 yard, at our 10 yard line to take the kick. And the kick goes up and high and it's going to come down short, hit about the 19 yard line and they will down the ball about the 15 yard line. So the Red Devils are going to start deep this time at the 15. And our offense is coming back on the field. Up to the line, wide outs to both sides. Andrews and Gavin Williams in the backfield. Hand off to Gavin Williams. He goes nowhere. Actually loses about a yard. And he's tackled by that number 74 that uh, Derek Cosby, the Coach Flowers, was telling me about. So the scouts had something to look at on that play. And as you were talking about these injuries, we're certainly glad to see Travis Clark back with us, even though I understand he still has a little swelling in his hand where he got that spider bite. And we hope these other guys who are out with injuries will have a speedy recovery and soon be back with us. Okay, second down from the shotgun. Wide out, split wide outs to both sides. Clark's having to scramble. He's chased by number 88 and number 74. The ball is intercepted on the 20-yard line and returned to the seven, so the Screaming Devils will have the ball first and goal inside the 10. And Bruce, no one has scored a touchdown or a point on us in the first two quarters this year. We've had three points scored against us in the third quarter, which was just last, last, just last week. week. And other than that, we've only had 22 points all year. So we really need to step up right here to hold our first half record intact. And handoff to number 15, who goes nowhere, actually loses a couple of yards. And the Red Devils are fired up, folks. They really are. Uh, number eight, Belafonte Davis in on that stop, Neil. Belafonte was the first one to hit him, and he was assisted by a couple more. But that's going to bring them back. Uh, loss of about two yards. It's going to be second down and nine for a touchdown. And we'll see what happens now. And handing off to number 14, or fake to number 14, and number 40 goes up the middle and is maybe gains a few yards, but he's pushed completely back past the 10 yard line, and they will give him forward progress to the five. So it's going to be third down and goal at the five for the Screaming Devils. And Neil, a number of Red Devil defenders in on that uh, stop. <laughs> Led by number nine, C.J. Norman. That quarterback followed that number 14 right there. That number 14 is, well, we don't have a number 14 on their roster. But anyway, followed that number 14 right into the line. Maybe it was 15. Hand off to number 24. And he is met by Octavius Andrews. Actually, it was a fake handoff to him. Looks like the quarterback may have kept the ball. And I see a pile of Red Devils. That's one of those who just have to call the roll on, Neil. I think we could easily, more easily say who was not in on that stop than who wasn't. It looked like everybody was there. Well, it was Weidman, it was Beard, it was who else? Andrews, maybe. Several of them. It's fourth down now and four yards for a touchdown. And this is a play that will preserve our first half record, possibly. And touchdown. Screaming Devils, Screaming Devils. So these Screaming Devils have really come out screaming, Neil. They They've done something nobody else has been able to do so far this season. And that is score on this Red Devil team before the first half. And just as I said, these uh, guys from Warren County always give us a hard ball game. So they're going to line up for an extra point attempt. And a low snap. Uh, the kick is up, and it is... Good, and the Screaming Devils will come out ahead now. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time that the Red Devils have been behind this year. It is, I believe, Neil. I'm sure 
Our friend Johnny Walton will give us all the facts and numbers and figures on that. We'll have plenty of uh, information before tonight. And that's johnnywalton.com for those of you who don't who have been on another planet and hadn't heard about him. But you certainly want, if you have access to the internet, you want to take a look at Lincoln County Red Devils.com. That's a site that is. Uh, put together and maintained by, by Johnny Walton and it has every fact and figure and number that you ever would want to know about the Red Devils and their opponents through the years. And it is something that is uh, extremely time consuming I would assume. I'm sure it takes an awful lot of its time. It takes a lot of time just to go and look at all this stuff. Does. It sure does. Okay. The Screaming Devils with 6-11 left to go in the first quarter will be kicking off to the Red Devils. It's another squib type kick and Chris Kite downs the ball at the 30 yard line so the Red Devils will have good starting position at the 30 again. And, uh, and we'll go from that. First down and 10 at the 30. And I don't know how many interceptions uh, Travis has, Clark has thrown this year, but that's one of the very few. I, I, that's one of the few that I can even remember, Neil. I'm not aware uh, of any, really. I, I don't know. Anyway, he's starting off on the center this time. Wide outs to both sides. He's got Andrews and Jennings in the backfield, and he's going to hand off to Jennings, who's got some room to run, and ends up with about a seven or eight yard gain. Bring up second down. Second down and three yards to go. And you know, a minute ago when Gavin Williams was ran that ball, Bruce, it it looked to me like he pulled up short. Maybe he maybe his knees tender, or he wasn't able to really get in there like he had wanted to. And I noticed he hadn't been in the game since then. All right, wide to both sides. Andrews and Jennings behind the quarterback. Hand off to Andrews up the middle. First down and about a seven-yard gain. Be first and 10 at the 45, and the Red Devils are moving. And, Neil, we don't want to see any of these guys have any injuries, uh, but as you were, were naming off some of these players that are having problems because of injuries and some of them that are out because of injuries, they are some of the players that we have really been uh, depending on. And um, so we're, we're having to, to use some other folks in those positions. And handoff to Andrews and a whistle and a flag. And I'm thinking that's going to be an uh, illegal procedure or a movement on the Red Devils. Bruce, tonight's our homecoming night. We've got some special guests coming around in a little while. You want to talk about me? Well, and speaking of homecoming, we got Tyson Turner and Al Dawkins, who uh, who used to do this broadcast when they were here at Lincoln County High School. They sort of got us started in this uh, before it fell to me and you. And they're here. They are in the booth with us, and they'll be talking to you a little later. <clears throat> also, somebody here on this homecoming night, the class of 1948 is having their reunion this weekend. 55, if I'm thinking my math right, 55 years. We're glad to have them here. Okay, we got trips to the right, single back in the backfield. Fake to Andrews and Clark keeps the ball and he gets really nowhere. Back to the line of scrimmage. It's gonna be second down and 15. And Neil, these screaming devils have really come out tough, haven't they? They sure have. I think their record this year is only like two wins and several losses, but they're playing better than a two-win team right now. All right, Clark's got trips to the right. He's back to throw the ball, and he's got time. Well, he's having to scramble a little bit, and then he throws the ball up, and he hit C.J. Norman for a 60-yard touchdown pass. And the Devils will go up by a score of 12-7 to 7 with the extra point attempt coming. And, boy, that was a quick strike. You know, I thought he was throwing the ball to somebody else. And it looked almost like the ball went through their hands and he was he was there for them. Well, he has really faked us out a lot, Neil. <laughs> he has. We can't see that well for sure, but uh, 
He has definitely faked us out a lot. And we're going to go for two. We're trying to get that point back uh, for a little while ago. We got wide right and left. We got uh, Clark and a shotgun. We got motion by Gresham, uh, by Stokes. And reverse handoff to number nine. Touchdown or extra two-point conversion complete. C.J. Norman, rather not, not uh, I call the wrong name there, Bruce. I'm getting, must be getting old. Well, you, you're getting that uh, part-time, I mean, uh, Alzheimer's disease, man. <laughs> well, sometimes. I mean, some folks call it part-timers, and I think I got Alzheimer's. <laughs> All right, the Red Devils have gone back up now by 14-7. If anybody gave that 14-7 at Verizon and we don't score anymore, they'll win the jackpot. They will win the jackpot now. I know last week we did not have a winner. Uh, as most of these folks know by now, we were on with Doug Newman last week on the radio. That's uh, right. And uh, bled, uh, bled, <laughs> bled. taped that uh, in with our, with our TV broadcast here. And Neil, we saw for a moment there in our monitor the Red Devil Spirit Shack. And that's the pet partners operate that, and they have all kind of um, spirit items for sale. Shirts, mugs, tags, flags, <coughs> bags. What else? Everything. You name, it, they you, got it. you name it, they got this it. This Red Devil, they got it. And a very short kick goes to the 40-yard line, and it's picked up. Let's see who's got this ball. Drum Long is kicking off, and uh, hadn't got off a real good kick yet. But that was better than the first one because his last one they ran back to the 45-yard line. That was better. So he had zero run back on this one. It'll be first down at the 39. Neil, you looked at me like you wanted me to say something. Well, but I'll hold it. That's just that. Uh, that's just that blank look I get every now and then. All right, handoff to oh, handoff to Fumble on the play and picked up by number 40, Josh Beard and the Red Devils. The Red Devils will have the ball, first and ten on the 26-yard line. That fumble was uh, was caused by Belafonte Davis, who got through the line and and hit that back and jogged the ball loose. And it was covered quickly by number 40, Josh Beard. He tried to pick that ball up, almost did pick it up, he, but he wanted to fall. pick it up, and run with it, didn't he? The thing to do is fall on it, though. But it's hard to, it's hard to fall on him when you look up and nothing between you and the end zone but stripes and grass. All right, the Red Devils now in business again. They got uh, twins to the right. Pair of backs, handoff to Andrews who goes up the middle for about five yards. It'll bring up a second down play in about, second down in about five. Well, Gilly said second and six, so he's right, I guess. Well, he's not always right, Neil, but we'll, we'll give him credit for being right on this play. And we're talking about Gil Madison, the stadium announcer, who really does a fine job. And hand off to Andrews again, who goes around the left side and drags a couple of them for about a three-yard gain. And he's just a little bit slow getting up with a little limp. But, Neil, if you had to pull those big guys, you, you, I probably wouldn't get up. They'd have to come and carry me off. Bruce, me and you probably wouldn't pull them. No. Third down and two. And I do believe this is four down territory for the Devils. We're going to have wide outs to the right and left. We're going to have Beard and Andrews in the backfield behind Clark. Beard will move up in a tight end position almost, and Andrews goes over for a first down and inside the 15. <laughs> first down, 
And then we have just uh, two minutes left in this quarter. And then coming up in the second quarter, our guests are supposed to come in, and they're going to take over our duties and give us a little break for a little homecoming of their own. Well, that's good. It'll be interesting to hear them guys back on there again. I listened to some of the tapes that they, that they made back, what, three years ago now? Way back when in the olden days. Yeah, back in the old days. Jennings with the ball, and he makes a move on the deep on the defensive end and ends up with about an eight-yard carry. Be second down and a few. You're doing a little remodeling over there. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm remodeling, Neil. I'm taking the window out where I can see. Second down and about three. Minute and 13 seconds and counting in the first quarter. We got wide outs to the right and left. Got two backs in the backfield, Jennings and Beard, and hand off to Beard behind Jennings, and he gets maybe a yard. Gonna bring up a third down play. And the clock running now. And the clock is running. And the clock is running still. Okay, we're coming up here third down and about two. We got a timeout. Timeout called by Clark. Be the Red Devils' first timeout of the half. Neil, while we have this time out, and before we uh, hand off to our homecoming friends, we want to remind our viewers that on November the 1st, the First Baptist Church musical program will begin at 5 p.m., and that features the Echoes of Joy, Curtis Clark and the Clark family, the Mount Zion Mail Chorus, First Baptist Mail Chorus, the First Baptist Praise Team, and the Rehoboth Mail Chorus. Also, they have R.F. Perry Mail Chorus, and many, many others, and the public is invited to that, and that's November the 1st at First Baptist Church here in Lincoln, beginning at 5 p.m. Also, we've got a new business opening up we want to remind you about, and that's the Quarter Plus Dollar Store, uh, opening November the 1st. I think they actually already opened, but they're having a grand opening then, and they're located next door to Bell's Food Store here in Lincolnton. On November the 2nd, the First Assembly of God will present an evening of song beginning at 6 p.m. featuring Destiny's Call. That'll be good, Neil. You need to go to that. That's a great group to hear. That's one of our homegrown groups. And, um, and also the First Assembly of God Choir will be featured on that program. And that's November the 2nd, beginning at 6 p.m. Okay, timeout's over. All the planning's done. 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Third and two. Got a wide out, way wide out to the right. Brown, two backs in the backfield, Jennings and Beard. Hand off to Beard. Goes behind, excuse me, uh, fake. Clark keeps it all up. Touchdown with Touchdown. 13 minutes. 13 minutes. Well, 13 seconds, Neil. Let me get my... But, uh, you know, these clocks have really confused me. We have so many different ones, but I'm adjusted to this one now. And uh, 13 seconds remaining in this quarter. Bruce, I can tell that you really adjusted. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Bruce. That's all right. I, I'm used to that. I get it everywhere. I get it at home, at work, you know, everywhere. You know, that's that's a that's a big improvement. Uh, we should have noticed you before you adjusted. That, that's correct. <laughs> I believe you're correct. All okay. right. Beard uh, kicks, and it finally goes yeah, it through. Is, it, it went over. It was about a foot over the crossbar. All righty. So, with 13 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Red Devils have gone out to a 21-7 lead on the Warren County Screaming Devils. And Neil, next week we'll be at uh, Wrightsville, Johnson County. That game begins at 7.30, and that's October the 31st, and we're looking forward to that, even though we've got to get through this game. How you get there, Bruce? Um, somebody will be going that we can follow. <laughs> All right, we've got the Red Devil kicking team on the field again. Drum and Long is teeing it up again. And we'll see what we get out of this one. And away we go, and 
the ball's kicked pretty high and comes down at the 29-yard line. Taken by number 40, I believe, and down immediately. It'll be first down and 10 on the 28-and-a-half-yard line for the Screaming Devils. And about three seconds runs off the clock, leaving 10 seconds in this quarter, Neil, with the score, 21, Lincoln County, 7, Warren County. Number 88 in the motion, handoff up the middle to somebody, couldn't get a number, and he goes for about five yards, four or five yards. He's tackled by Beard. And that'll wind up. Davis and others. And that'll wind up this first quarter, Neil. Uh, our score here at Buddy Buffett Stadium. 21 Lincoln County Red Devils, 7 Warren County Screaming Devils. And now, as we were saying, we have a homecoming. We're glad to welcome Tyson Turner and Al Dawkins in our booth tonight. We're going to turn it over to them and let our viewers hear from them for a while. Tyson? And hello, ladies and gentlemen. And me and Tyson sure are glad to be back here at Buddy Buffer Stadium for this homecoming night against Warren County. As Mr. Reds told you, the score is 21 to 7 in favor of our Red Devils. And uh, Tyson, what are you thinking of the Devils so far? Uh, I think we look pretty good. We had a, a couple of mishaps down there in our own end zone, quickly. And uh, we look pretty good. Uh, Warren County definitely has some athletes out there, but right. I think we've gotten back on schedule, back on track. A little bit of a shaky start, though, tonight. Yeah, yeah. It was just that one turnover, and, you know, they made us pay for it. Right. They, they didn't let the opportunity slip away. you got to give them credit for that. But right. uh, we're looking pretty good right now. We look think, like we got it in hand. I think we are coming out pretty strong. We've been plagued with injuries and such the past couple of weeks. But uh, hopefully, especially by Twigs County in a couple of weeks, everybody will be back. Yeah, back I've heard, home. I've heard uh, Twigs is pretty bad. they got, so you got Cordell Coppin, who's a definite starter, integral part of this team. He's hurt. He has an ankle injury. Brandon Reed's hurt. Uh, there's just been multiple injuries been plaguing us this year. That was number 24 on the carry. That'll be third down and four. That was a gain of three yards for Warren County. The quarterback for Warren County is number 40, who is not listed in the program, so... I'm not sure I ain't got a name on that hand, but he is uh, he's a pretty good athlete watching. They run my basic some kind of option. They run out of different sets, but usually it's predominantly like an option quarterback. But he's a good enough athlete to make stuff happen. Let's bring up third and three. Quick handoff to the fullback or to the halfback. Didn't get a number. I don't know. Not much of a gain on the play. That'll bring up a fourth down. Punt situation for Warrington. Devils look to get good field position on this one. Right. The punt there last time didn't quite have a great punt. Um, sure. Some uh, pretty ugly plays tonight, but it <laughs> turned out to work well for the Red Devils. Um, with that last pass on that uh, third touchdown. Yes, it was. And especially, like, we opened up with the, you know, the special play we run. Yeah, it's fourth down and three. They're going to go for it. They're going to keep it. They get nowhere. And they're going to get it. So the Red Devils will take over first and ten on the Warren County 35-yard line. That was a good penetration by number two, Shontavious Jennings. I'm not sure who else was there. I believe uh, Josh Beard was somewhere in there. We've got a Red Devil down, 61. That's Dante Parks, but he looks to be okay. So the Lincoln County offense will take over. It'll be first and ten with ten minutes and 42 seconds left in the second half. Dante's having a little trouble getting off the field. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong. He seems to be favoring like a shoulder or something. I'm not sure what's wrong with him. Vernon Wilson, the team trainer, out on the field. Here comes Richard Willsby. We got some of the coaches coming out here to check on Dante. I'm not really sure about other Class A action going on tonight. I know there is one game. Social Circle versus Jefferson, which is supposed to determine the number two spot for um, Region Eight. That would be. Would that be who we play first round? I'm not. I think. I'm we, not sure how they work out there. I'm not. I haven't seen the brackets, but uh, of course, Commerce will more than likely be the number one seed in in that region. And then the game tonight between Jefferson and Social Circle should determine the number two spot. Right. I didn't mean first round. I meant 
what, a later round, because we will right. play number four, supposing we win this region, which probably will be determined in the Twiggs County game. Right. Twiggs County actually looking pretty good this year. I haven't seen them on film, but I've heard they're pretty much the same as last year, except a little bit quicker. So. Yeah. Last year, Twiggs County came down here, and they they just have athletes all right. over the ball. They, they were very fast, quick, and uh, it's, go it's hard to combat that. You can't. Brings up first, speed. first and ten for the Red Devils. Travis Clark, Clark by the pass. pass. Scrambling, can't find a receiver. Sees Chris Kreit open in the end zone. In and out of the hands of Chris Kreit. A little bit of a Notre Dame setup in the end zones tonight. <laughs> yeah, they're trying something different, <laughs> I guess. Kind of like it. <laughs> so that'll bring up second and ten. It's like... Trying to open up the playbook a little bit. Let Travis Clark throw. It's good to see Travis back out there. He was hurt. A uh, spider bite or something. Right. Kind of unusual. Yeah. Head, I think, night in the hospital. Uh, that's kind of rare you hear stuff like that. It's same, good to see him out there. Same formation for the Red Devils on this play. Second and ten. Josh yeah. tried to pass again. Scrambling. Kite's open. He's coming back. Good catch. Oh. <laughs> it's for sure. Yeah, they're going to give him the catch. Ball on about the 13 yard line of Warren County. Hmm. So that'll give us first and 10 on the Warren County 14 yard line. Who we got back there? Running back, we have. I see Shontavious back there. Who yeah. else is back deep? 25, Laquino Mickens was deep last play. I'm assuming he'll be. Yeah, we come out. Twins right again. C.J. Norman, Chris Kite to your right. And Steven Next. Brown, your lone left receiver. Go fade to Steven. Steven's got it. Uh, good play by number 22. That was a nice pass, though. Yeah, it's good coverage by the Warren County defense. That'll bring up a third and 10 situation. That's second and 10. Is it second? Yeah, because we got the first time. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Just keep you on your toes. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> So that brings up second and ten from the 14. Clark comes in with the play. Come out this time. We're going to flip it. Twins left. I Deep back. Shontavious Jennings. Meekins it up. Going to run an option. Clark keeps it. Picks up. A couple yards on the Yeah, ground. two or three yards. Not a bad pickup. This is definitely four down territory. I don't believe we're going to go for a field goal considering extra points. So I'll be up. They spotted him with a two yard gain. Third down and eight on the 12 yard line. We get inside the three. We can get a fresh set of downs, which you know, is not impossible. So Clark comes in with the play. Pretty good addition to the football team this year, Travis Clark. I'd say he's a decent addition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's played well. He's come in and played well. He really has. That'll be a timeout, Red Devils. Timeout, Red Devils. And I believe that's your second timeout. While we've got this uh, timeout, let's talk about a little college action going on tomorrow. Homecoming at, at Georgia, I believe. Yes, it's homecoming playing uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham tomorrow. I believe it, the kickoff is at 1. I'm not oh, sure about that. No, it's not televised, so it's not telling what time it is. And Georgia's hope for another national championship run got a little more <laughs> boost Wednesday it's, night. Yeah, it's still looking That's decent, right. knock on wood. Uh, Virginia Tech, upset by West Virginia. I, I tell you, there's a lot of West Virginia fans in Athens the other day. That's right. <laughs> and it's a little far-fetched, but now if Georgia can win out and if one of the top two teams can lose a game, it's, we'll be up there. It's, it's not... It could be worse. The, basically, if we if, if Georgia wins out, they have a good chance because, you know, providing Miami or Oklahoma one loses because the strength of schedule for Georgia is about to skyrocket yes. because of Auburn, Florida, SEC championship game, all that. So, you know, it's not unheard of. see another Sugar Bowl this year. That'd be nice. Back to the action. Timeout's over. Clock on the center. Clark's going to do a quick handoff to Shantavis. Shantavis drops the ball, picks it up, and gets back about to the line of scrimmage. Actually, actually gains a yard or two. <laughs> so, Shantavis saves the day for the Red Devils. A bit unorthodox. 
It's going to bring out about fourth down six yards or so. Mr. Madsen up in the booth, I believe, said five. So a gain of three for Jennings. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left in the second quarter. Warren County looking to make a goal line stand here. We come out, we have, looks like we had a double tight set. It's going to drop back, pass. Wide open is Drum Long. That's a touchdown. That's Red Devils. Number 88, uh, Sherman Burnett. But Warren County saw it, but he saw it just a little bit too late. Nice well, catch by Drum. I tell you, Drum Long has really come out this year and, and made himself known as a star player on this Red Devil offense. He has. Uh, I saw the, the Washington Rush game, and Drum yeah. had quite a nice game in Washington Rush game. And he also, I think, got a, a couple of sacks in that game as well mm -hmm. on defense. It's, it's hard to, to combat a, a strong tight end like Miami's Kellen Winslow. It's, when you don't have anybody, it, doesn't, it's not, it creates matchup problems. And with Drum playing on both ends of the ball, it makes it even tougher on him. Mm -hmm. And even more amazing that he can run a fake. Fake, CJ, CJ throws. <laughs> nice play. That's two points for the Red Devils. Caught by number six, looks like Teddy Chewy. That's 29, Lincoln County, seven for Warren County, with eight minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock in the first half. That is also 23 unanswered points so ever since Warren County took a quick 7-6 to six lead off the turnover. And as all of you know, tonight is Lincoln County's homecoming festivities with lots of uh, things on the agenda tonight. Uh, in addition to the homecoming team, uh, queen and princess, I believe Coach Thomas Bunch will be honored tonight for and, uh, his state championship team as well. And what year was that? 60? 1963, 63. I believe. My daddy was the backup quarterback Number 12 on that team. It'd be nice to see. <laughs> One of the great old teams. He told me to uh, say his name on television. <laughs> so that one's for him. <laughs> I liked how you snuck that in there. <laughs> nice. So the Red Devils set to kick off. And do we have a new kicker? Looks like 89. Rex Reed in the kick. He's a sophomore Red Devil. So are we trying something a little bit different? So is that the third kicker for the Red Devils tonight, I believe? Uh, I'm not sure. I know Jerome kicked off, and Josh Beard has been doing the extra points. I'm not sure if Josh kicked off any. Looks really kind of a more of a soccer style kicker. Kicks to the far side. The ball go out of bounds. No, actually, it does not. Does it? No. Yes. The ball goes out of bounds. There goes the flag. It's kind of a late flag, though. The trouble getting out of his pocket. So it looks like Warren County will take over on their own 29-yard line. Uh, I believe with the penalty, it goes up to like 35 or something. I'm not quite certain. We'll find out soon enough. Looks like the referees aren't quite certain either. Debating about something. Got to go explain it to Coach Henry. Uh, yes, they'll get the ball there on 35. Due to the illegal illegal procedure, what do they call it? Out, out of bounds kickoff. So decent field position for Warren County on this play. I wonder who number 40 is. He drops back to pass. He's got 83 open. Guns it. Uh, that's a little high though. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, there has a new rule in effect in the Georgia High School Association known as the Mercy Rule. Ah, uh, yes. If a team is up by 30 points at halftime, the clock will run. Is it, stopping. is it a is it a guarantee thing or is it like a decision by well, a coach? Well, what it is is the coach can uh, decide at the third quarter whether he wants the clock to run or not. The, but if it's still a 30-point lead at the fourth quarter, then it's mandatory. Then it's mandatory. Uh, does... Is the losing coach at the size? Right. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> More so than the winning coach. And that rule did go into effect. It's a flag down. Maybe a face mask or something, I'm not sure. Last week against Aquinas with the Red Devils 46-3 to victory, I believe. And it also uh, Athens Christian. Right. It was enforced Athens Christian. Except in that game, they went to five-minute quarters instead of full-length quarter. Flag on the play. It's a face mask against Lincoln County. So, push Lincoln County back a little bit more. Warren County had a nice, had a nice little run there, even without the penalty. He got, you know, seven, seven yards, five yard penalty. Yeah, that's just an inadvertent face mask. 
Looks like no, it will not be a first down. We bring up second down and one for Warren County. So number 40, we don't have a name, but he's under center. And another flag on the play. False start against Warren County, and that will negate the five-yard penalty they just got against Lincoln a minute ago. So that makes second down, six to go for Warren County. We were talking before we came on, Tyson, about this interesting how Warren County is running a lot of different sets tonight. They yeah, they, yeah, they bring out a lot. They, they throw a lot at us. Um, basically, most of the thing that works, though, is misdirections or options, kind of like that. Um, good play, good run by number 24. Still no name on him. That's good enough for Warren County first down. It'll bring the ball to their own 48-yard line. Warren County moving the chains about to cross midfield. Running down some clock as well as they go. It's just under eight minutes left to go in the second quarter. First and ten. From the Screaming Devil 49. They run kind of a bunch set almost. To the right. They're going to run just this basic toss sweep right. Backside for two. Ooh. Tackled. Uh, nice hit by number eight, Belafonte Davis. Tackled harshly for no gain <laughs> on the play. That'll bring up a second down and ten situation. That's, right. That's one thing you got to watch out for when you do a spin move like that. You leave yourself wide open to just kind of a backside pursuit. And Belafonte caught him right at the right time. No gain on the play. Second down and ten on Warren County's own 49-yard line. They run the same set, real far, split in to the near side of the field. He's going to drive back. It looks like he's trying to throw the ball to that split in. He guns it, wins it. Ball's up in the air. Intercepted, looks like. Uh, it's an incomplete pass, they rule. Intended for number 83, Keith Green. I thought number nine, that's C.J. Norman. I thought he got his hands up underneath it, but the referee was right there. Made a quick call, incomplete. Bring up third down and 10 for Warren County. You got to believe this is four down territory. Right. You know, I don't really know a lot. But when you're down 22 and you're at midfield and your punting game is not exactly strong. Next week, the Devils face Johnson County, who faced a surprising defeat a couple weeks ago against Warren County. Warren slipped up and won, I believe, by two or three points. Mm. And um, Johnson County, I believe, was only they were beat us last year, but only won one game this year. Got a CJ Norman in with a quick pressure drum. <laughs> Jump like a whole host of red devils. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to knock them over and fall over. <laughs> so that looks was like red. Looks like a punt. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna bring up a punt. Bring up fourth down, long, probably 18, 19 yards, something like that. Pressure that time by number 61, Dante Parks. Also number nine, C.J. Norman. Drum Long was in there. Back deep is number 12, Tavares Stokes brother of former Red Devil Nevadrich Stoke. Nice punt. Bears is going to let it drop. Ball will be down by Warren County right along the 28-yard line of Lincoln County. So with 6 minutes and 11 seconds left to play, the Red Devils will take over. Here's a flag on the field. They're debating it. I didn't see him run into the kicker. I didn't see anything uh -huh. along those lines. False, False start on Warren County. That penalty will be declined, I'm sure. There you go. We might make a... No, it looks like we're bringing in the offense. Penalty is declined. So, Lincoln County offense will take over at their own 38-yard line. 28-yard line. I apologize. I'm sure if this was a bigger game against a tougher opponent, we'd have made them kick again. It, you know, there's... There's arguments, I guess, for and against declining that penalty, but... But it's not bad field position. Yeah, that's right. It's, you got the ball in your own 28, six minutes, plenty of time. You can run the ball. You do whatever you want to. You don't have to stray from your game plan. This time we have uh, number 12, who just returned the kick to their Stokes. Split far right. That receiver. Parked out of the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket. Guns it. 
Intercepted by number 40. Gun long. It's the second interception on the night for Warren County. He returns the interception to about the 35 yard line. So now Warren County, like they never punted the ball. <laughs> like they had just about a 15 yard gain. That was good coverage by number 48. Number 40, I'm not, I'm not sure who he is, but he seems to be everywhere. He's the quarterback. He's right. playing some kind of cornerback safety. He's making big plays. All we have to go by here is the program, and he's not, he's not listed unless he's listed as a different number. I imagine he must be what he is. So Warren County takes over on the Lincoln County 36-yard line. Six minutes. Number 40 again, scrambling. And it's intercepted by the Red Devils. Was that Stephen Brown? That was number 11, Stephen Brown. So, again, the Red Devils take over. Stephen Brown. First down, Lincoln County. Third It's interesting. Uh, in the program tonight, there is no quarterback listed for Warren <laughs> County. So, I don't know if that was just an omission or what. But number 40 is taking over the quarterback duties tonight. Because the interception, Lincoln County will take over at their own 37. We're just trading turnovers here. <laughs> Five minutes, 50 seconds left in the first half. Now number 30, Josh Wimbush, sitting at wide receiver for Lincoln County. Clock on the center. Fakes the handoff, keeps it. Good work. Gets a yard or two. That was a nice penetration by, I believe, number 23 of Warren County. He was right there at the handoff. Nice job by Clark to keep it. Good read. Second down and nine for Red Devils, a gain of a yard. Clock still ticking. We're just at five and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter. Looks like another shotgun situation. Joe Terrell, the center, trotting off the field to bring in the deep snapper. Deep snapper is number 60. Jeremy Crickham, I guess. I'm not sure. I can't see his other number. 66. Oh, is that what it is? That'd be Joseph Wells. Does it? Intended receiver is number 12 to Bear Stokes. A little bit offline. So we have third down. Third down and nine. We had some deep patterns going on. <laughs> I looked up and I saw Stephen Brown and Chris Kite. <laughs> I'm almost at the 20-yard line. There must have been a couple of flies, a couple of posts going. Right at five minutes left to go in the half. Third and nine. This is one of the most promising seasons the Red Devils have seen in a few years. Um, a 7 0 start, trying to make it 8 0 tonight. We still have deep snapper in, so it looks like it'll be another shotgun set. We got Josh Beard and Drum Long back, assuming for protection. And there's a flag. Josh Clark. Flag on the play. It's more than likely that's against us. Be a false start Delayer against game. the Red Devils. Delayer game. Delayer game. That's what. Okay. That's what he's got. So I'll move it back five yards. Be third down and 14. Lincoln County going the wrong way. They already had the play call, so no need for a huddle. They go snap it quickly. That twin's right. Two back. Shotgun. Pressure on. He steps up in the pocket. Throws it up. Number 11, Stephen Brown, who's open. And he catches the ball. Oh, Stephen. For major yardage and another Red Devil first down. He was finally tackled by guess who? Number 40, Warren County. Nice pitch and catch by Travis Clark and Stephen Brown. A gain of about 40-something yards. And whoever this number 40 is, is getting a lot of play time <laughs> tonight. Let's see. Oh, yeah, go all the way down to the, about the 19-yard line of Warren County. Big play. The clock is not a factor. Right now, still right at five minutes. Brown got out of bounds last play, so Clark is still not a factor. Same formation for the Red Devils. Clark back to pass. Looking for number three, Chris Kreit, wide open. He finds Chris Kreit. Touchdown, Red Devils. I look to be almost a breakdown in coverage. <laughs> There's nobody back there with Chris. Chris made a good catch. Right. So touchdown, Lincoln County. That'll make the score 35-7 with the extra points still to go. With still almost five minutes left on the clock. Right, and like you said, was it a 30-point bear? Or was that the mm -hmm. 30 so, points? So. Right at it, 28. Go for two. We're not going to do that. We're going to kick it, but still. And uh, I believe the the JV team ended their season with a win over Washington Wilkes the other, uh, last week. I believe 32 to 22 victory over the Tigers. 
Josh Berry didn't get the extra point. Snap hold by CJ Norman. And it is blocked. It's blocked by number 40. <laughs> so, that score is 35 to 7 with 4 minutes 49 seconds left in the clock. So far, only on defense. Number 40 for Warren County already has a block kick, interception, uh, at least a couple of tackles. He's also playing quarterback, has pretty good yardage. Fans, County will kick off. fans at Buddy Buffett Stadium tonight, like we said, will be able to enjoy the homecoming festivities at halftime with the crowning of the queen and the princess. Senior recognition was, I believe, before kickoff tonight. It's always good to recognize those Red Devils who come out every night. And number, number 89, Red Tree, will be kicking off again. And back deep for Warren County. Number 40. <laughs> and also 24. Which we don't have a name for either. It's kind of a theme we have going. <laughs> nice kick by Rex Reed. Over his head. It's going to go deep. Number 40 was about to pick it up. Picks it up about his own 10-yard line. He has an opening. Pushed out of bounds. And number 24, I believe that was Raquino Mickens. Is that 24 or 25? He has 25 by Queen O'Mickens out there to push him out of bounds. So Warren County turns that into a pretty decent field position. Yeah, that could have been had disaster written all over it, but nice play by Warren County to get him back out and back to the 25. So That's Warren County takes over. First and 10, Warren County. Ball spotted on the 26-yard line. Four minutes, 42 seconds left to go in the half. Lincoln County up 35-7. to seven. Same formation. They've been running the option a lot out of this formation. They have one receiver out, split left. Do almost a counter to the deep back. Gets pretty good yardage. Out to the Lincoln County 33, 32-ish. Depends on the spot. Gain of about six. So a pretty good run there by Warren County. It'll bring up second down and about four. The ref spotted at a five-yard game. Come out. Same formation. They just flipped it on him. Split right. Same play on the side. <laughs> Not much doing there. On the tackle is number, let's see, Raquino Mickens, number 25, and also number 42, George Beard, on the tackle. They're down four yards to go. Three minutes, 40 seconds in the first half. Clock still running. This is a big play for Warren County. If uh, they need to get a couple fresh downs, keep running down the clock. Otherwise, this game might get out of hand quickly. Same formation. Same play. That was a new quarterback against for Warren County. Yeah, actually, yeah. He, uh, the receiver, not the receiver, the running back, was the former quarterback, number 40. He gets the handoff, but doesn't get any yardage to bring up fourth down six. Looks like the punt team's coming in. Number 10, Ronaldo Smith, and at quarterback. I saw him warming up. Uh, he was throwing some passes, so he is a definite backup quarterback. <laughs> the punter is uh, number 40. <laughs> number 40. <laughs> he tried to call timeout. They did not get it. Pretty good punt, though, regardless. Be fielded by Tavares Stokes. About 36. He has a wall. He has a nice wall set up. There is a flag on the play. We're not sure what the flag is. Tavares runs it. Back for a touchdown. We'll have to see what that flag is. Warren County tried to call timeout. I'm not sure if that was because of some sort of substitution infraction. They didn't have people on the field. The legal procedure in Warren County, regardless, that will be declined. Uh, so that does bring up that 30-point lead that we were talking about. It will be interesting to see whether or not Warren County will decide to put that rule into effect. That score makes it the Red Devils with a 34, 33-point lead. Now it should be, should be 41 up there, I believe, because we had 35. I don't want to put Warren County out too soon. There is two minutes and 37, 36 seconds left in the half. Just wait on to get the extra point again. 
We have converted one extra point so far this game. Nice hold, nice snap. He kicks it off the upright. <laughs> it was no good. Back into the line. So your score with two and a half minutes left in the half is 40 to 7 in favor of your Red Devils. While well, we've got a minute, we want to announce some of the upcoming events and things going on by the Chamber of Commerce. As always, these games are brought to you by the LCHS Broadcast Video Department and the Lincoln County Lincolnton Chamber of Commerce. November 2nd, First Assembly of God Choir will present an evening of song featuring Destiny's Call. November 4th, the Lincoln Historic Preservation Commission meeting. Holidays in Old Lincoln Town coming up soon in November. Also, Tyson, with the parade and things going on. I believe that's November 22nd. Starting at 12 noon and going until 8. The holiday parade will be at 4 p.m. Warren County comes up soon. They come along in a shotgun set. This is another interesting step in Warren County. Number 82 in motion. And there is a flag. Flag down. Somebody they didn't have enough men in the line of scrimmage or something. That was a dead ball flag. Legal procedure on Warren County. They'll move them back five. First down to 15. From about their own 26. Two and a half minutes left on the clock. Come up. Looks to be the same set. Number 40, shotgun. Looking around. Man in motion again. Low snap, quick handoff, number 24. Number 24 breaks open. Stephen Brown's out there, gets stiff arm. Brings him down right at the marker. At about the 35 yard line. I believe he's going to be a little bit short. About a yard short, I believe. He does get out of bounds, though, stops the clock with 2.22 left to go. Nice play by Warren County, though. Chain man, Jim Madison, had to get out of the way quick. <laughs> he's a veteran, you can see. <laughs> Warren County. Almost a no huddle, even though the clock went running. He keeps it, fakes the handoff, keeps it, makes a move. He's got a little lane going. It's first down yardage and then some. So we have a first and ten. That's a game of about nine yards or so. Nice game by Warren County, moving the chains. Clock stops. Do the chains get reset? Warren County moving the ball pretty well since they have adopted this. Shotgun formation, no huddle. Man in motion, once again. Fakes the handoff, keeps it. This, no, this time it's number 24. He gets okay. not much of anything. He does go out of bounds, though, so I'll stop the clock with just over two minutes left to go. Just joining us, it's Lincoln County 41. Warren County 7, two minutes left to go. So, Warren County offense with a second down and 10 situation. No gain on that previous play. Ball on their own 45-yard line with two minutes left in this first half. Same formation. Man in motion. He's going to run a little option. No, he drops right the pass. Almost a halfback pass. The man is open. Nice pass. It's like a touchdown, Warren County. Oh, <laughs> they're not going to give it to him. They're going to say his knee hit at about the half yard line. Nice pursuit by number three, Chris Crack, to bring him down. So Warren County about six inches away from their own goal line. Warren County moved the ball. Nice play. It was almost a, it looked to be an option, but half that drops back through the ball to a pretty well covered uh, number 83, Keith Green for Warren County, but Warren nice County catch, nice run. Not happy with that call. <laughs> You can take all you can get when you're down, you know, 41 to 7. Now they're running more of a bunch formation. Going to try to power it in. Quarterback sneak. Didn't get it. Drop oh. ball. Warren County does recover, I believe. That was quick reflexes by the quarterback to get back on there. That ball was laying there just begging to be returned for a touchdown <laughs> like Georgia, Tennessee. So after the fumble, it's a loss of about a yard for Warren County. Second down and four, it was a loss of two yards. Warren County moving in the right direction if you're a Red Devil fan. 
Lincoln County stacks the line. Pretty much the only man off the ball is number 11, Stephen Brown. Had another quick handoff, but he's tackled immediately. I believe that was Alex Weidman in there. Looks like a good stand by our defense. One minute left to play. Third down and four. Looks like a player down for Warren County. That's number 66, Ivory Story. Listed in the program as playing guard. The freshman guard for Warrington. So, just under a minute. Warren County threatening on the four-yard line. We third down and four. Those of you just joining us, Red Devils started off to somewhat of a shaky start, but regrouped and have come back to an astounding 41-7 to lead. Almost halftime here. It's kind of hard to imagine just what, a little bit over a quarter and a half ago. The score was 7-6 in favor of Warren County. But Lincoln County has scored 35 unanswered points. But it never fails. Warren County always gives us a fit to start off with. It's just like the Vanderbilt-Georgia game. <laughs> Vanderbilt always plays Georgia well. There's something about Warren County. They come in here. I like, you know, like we were talking about earlier, they just, they have good, ath they have good athletes. I mean, that's apparent from their basketball teams and right. just sports in general. Just looking, you can tell that they, they have talent. And, you know, you never can count out speed and athleticism. Warren County appears to be ready to take the field again. The players still down, getting assisted by the Warren County coaching training staff. I do believe November 7th is when Lincoln County and Twiggs County face off. And there is a group trying to get a chartered bus together um, for that trip. I believe it was a two and a half hour drive. And so if you're interested, you can talk to Richard Brown at Huddle House of Lincolnton. And um, I believe that group is trying to get a bus ride together. So uh, talk to him if you don't want to drive two and a half hours. Third down and four. Play begins again. Looks like a quick handoff. He keeps spinning. Could not tell. No signal. No touchdown. He had a second effort, then a third, <laughs> and then a fourth. He, it was a nice effort, but he did not quite make it into the end zone. The clock's still running. It's going to be fourth down. Maybe a yard. 30 seconds left to go. Big stand here by the Red Devils needed. Quarterback sneak. Uh, I don't think you got it. No, no signal made as of yet. They're going to try to separate him out, see where he is. But it looks good for the Devils. Slow to get up. And we have a touchdown signal. I think that might have been a sneak of the ball <laughs> across the goal line while the pile was on top. Regardless, the score is now 41-13 with 23 seconds left to go in the half. Pretty nice drive, though, to end the second quarter for Warren County. And it looks like they're coming on to kick the ball, kicking the ball for Warren County. is number 24. He's also playing some halfback return man. He pops it straight up, and it... That's not, oh, it doesn't make it. <laughs> Didn't look like enough distance from here. Yeah, well, you know. But it is 41-14. He kicked the shallow pot fly. <laughs> yeah. But it's really been a nice punt, too. 41-14, interestingly enough, was the score of Georgia-Tennessee a couple weeks ago. <laughs> a very good game if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan. Hopefully this one have the same positive <laughs> outcome. I apologize to all you Tennessee fans out there, though. So with 23 seconds left to go, Warren County looks to kick off. Back deep for Lincoln County will be, it appears, number 12, Tavares Stokes. Also back deep, number 30, Josh Wimbush. So 23 seconds left on the clock. Number Chance for a return and a few plays, a couple plays. A couple of plays. It'll be interesting to see whether we just sit on it or whether we try to air it out. Kicking off for Warren County will be number 40. This is a jack of all trades for Warren County. Warren County backs up off the ball a little bit. And we're waiting for something. Here's as though we have a referee's debating about something. 
play has not been blown in. Coming over to the almost as, <laughs> almost as though it's a TV timeout. Except there's no live television. Referee discussing with Coach Campbell. I'm not sure exactly what the holdup is. Coach walks out on the field. This is interesting. <laughs> I haven't heard anything. We were probably actually being quiet. We were trying to listen out, see if we can pick up any clues as to what is causing the hold up here. Interesting. Here's as though the argument has been settled. And Warren County set to kick off. And so, number 40. Kicks a short kick, almost a half onside. Fair catch called by number nine, but actually <laughs> called by number six. <laughs> but that's going to be a penalty as some sort of illegal fair catch signal or something, I believe. Fair catch called by C.J. Norman. <laughs> but caught by Terry Chewy. <laughs> Who returned it for a nice game up to uh, the Warren County 38. But I believe that's got to be a penalty. It is a flag down. I'm assuming Taylor just didn't see him call the catch. <laughs> Let's see. We'll, we'll find out. I'm not sure how big of a penalty that is. I will negate any return. There's no flag on the play. No flag. It waves the flag. So, nice return from Lincoln County. We have good field position with 16 seconds left to go in the half. <laughs> Nobody yeah. knows which way to go. <laughs> There's no flag. They just honor the fair catch. So Lincoln County will have the ball instead at their mm. own 37, as opposed to having it near the opponent's 37. So 16 seconds on the clock. You do see number 66, Joseph Wells, in. That means it's going to be a shotgun formation. Where Lincoln County looks, appears as though we're going to try to air it out. And so we'll have twins left. Stephen Brown, Chris Cratt to your far left. C.J. Norman. Near. Drops clock got back past those. It wide open Chris Kite. Chris Kite. Chris little move. Red Devil first down. He spins off a couple tackles. And fumbles the ball. And recovered by Warren County. Warren County. Recovering the football appears to be number 40. That's three seconds on the clock. Nice play. And so the fumble. A good number of turnovers tonight by the Red Devil. That's true. We have had a pretty good number of turnovers. And so Warren County has one has time left for one play in this second quarter. Probably just gonna sit on it, but you never know. They come out in that bunch formation. He's gonna just take a quick knee, and that'll be the half with your halftime score, 41-14, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time for homecoming festivities, and we are going to turn it back over after halftime to Bruce Beggs and Neil Reed. It sure has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure, and we appreciate you listening to us, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, welcome back, folks. This is Bruce Beggs along with Neil Reed. After we had our little break and had our guest announce us here, and we do appreciate them coming in for this homecoming. That was Tyson Turner and Al Dawkins. Yeah, I spoke with Tyson shortly after he said he enjoyed it. I invited him back, but I don't know if he's coming back or not. Well, it was nice to get a little break, Neil. Okay, Bruce, let's get rolling back here with some football. Uh, go over some stats. Lincoln County had five first downs to Warren County's three. We had 14 rushes for 69 yards. Warren County, 23 rushes for 70 yards. We attempted 12 passes, completed seven for 248 yards and two interceptions, which is not not characteristic of the Red Devils at all. Uh, they had one completion for three attempts, 53 yards and one interception. Total 26 plays for the Red Devils, 317 yards. 26 plays for Warren County, 123 yards. And time for the second half to start. Yeah. Got Rex Reed kicking off again, and he boots it good. Goes down to the 18-yard line, and taken by number 40, he returns it back to the 35. So, pretty good return, and Warren County will have first down on the 35. 
and Neil, those uh, st statistics through the first half were provided to us by our friend Johnny Walton, who we mentioned earlier, who runs a very fine website, uh, LincolnCountyRedDevils.com. And if you hadn't had a chance to take a look at that, we encourage you to do so. It's got a lot of information on there. And we appreciate all the support and help that he gives us. Pitch to number 15 goes around the right side, and he is caught by Octavius Andrews and finished off by Alex Weidman for no gain. And Neil, Neil, you know, we had a lot of help here in the first half, and we saw a solo in now. I mean, I don't know if two folks can do a solo, but... But we can handle it, Neil. Well, we had plenty of cameramen and none now, so. But we're going to bring you the action. Now, never fear. We are all here. And that rhymes, rhymes, Bruce. Yeah, You're I'm going to no 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 make a rhyme every time. I've heard that before, too, Neil. All right, hand off to 15 again. He goes off the right side. Got a little bit of a hole and gets about seven yards. It'll bring up third down. And... It's going to be third down and about four. And Neil, during our halftime activities, we saw uh, Brooks Bi Bi let me give him a tongue straight, Brooks Biles, that's a tongue twist, isn't it? It is. Crowned as homecoming princess. On the third down play, the quarterback kept the ball and went nowhere. He's tackled by Dante Parks, number 61, and number 44, drum long. Fourth down. And Neil, I want to also say that we saw uh, Natasha Lockhart crowned as homecoming queen. And, and, uh, and all of these young ladies deserve to win. They all look absolutely gorgeous, and I'm sure that they all have, uh, have been outstanding in their respective classes. All right, the punt is nearly blocked by Jennings, and ball goes down, hits around the 35, and rolls down to about the 30. So the Red Devils will take over first and 10 on the 30. Bruce, them young ladies are a whole lot prettier than they were when you and I came through school. Well, we had whole. some prettier ones when we came through there. We did, but I mean as a whole, you know, as, as, yeah, as, right, as, as a group. We, maybe we didn't, just, we didn't notice them as much as we <laughs> did in later years, Neil. <laughs> are you trying to say we're dirty on them, Bruce? No, I, I'm not trying to put it in that context, Neil. I'm just saying that we were occupied with other things. I understand. Okay, the Red Devils. But it certainly was a fine-looking homecoming court. We have a flag on the play, Neil. Do you know what the call is? I will shortly. It wasn't enough time, I don't think, to give us a delay of game. It looks like an illegal participation, if I see that right, which means maybe somebody had too many people when they broke the huddle. And we've got Jake Shelby back operating and, and back here. Yeah, have him back because it was sort of stretching us out to do it all. But we can do it all, Neil, now. Though. We, I mean, uh, that we can hook it up and take it down and run it while it's here. <laughs> you put that real well, there. And not necessarily uh, in the best fashion, but we can do it. All right. Ball back on the 25-yard line now. It's first down at 15. Red Devils with two wide outs. Single back in the backfield is number 40. Josh Beard. And TV timeout, obviously, Bruce, but they should have let us know that. that they really should have, Neil. Uh, but while we have this TV timeout, we've got a special ceremony after the game, and I hope that we're going to be able to get a camera down there and bring that to our viewers, too, and we're going to leave that as a surprise. So stay tuned. Mystery ceremony. Clark back to throw the ball. Under pressure, Neil. Coming out to the right. And throws a drum long and is caught. And drum reverses the field and goes back inside. Gain of about five yards on the play. And Neil, another example of how this quarterback can react under pressure. I, I would have, I, I would have been long gone if I had been him and all those big guys chasing after me. But uh, he, he just keeps his cool and and look for somebody to throw the ball to and did just that in drum long. Okay, that's second down there and about ten. And coming up to the line with what looks like to be our first unit offense. Twins right and left, wide to the right. Clark is back, throw again. He gets it over to, and it's intercepted by number 15, which is, and he runs it back inside the 35. It's the third interception we've thrown tonight. It, it, yes, that, that's, this is something really unusual for us to see is these interceptions, Neil. You know, Travis uh, was out 
week before last, Cadell Coppin was a starting quarterback. Travis got very little action in that game. And last week, Travis was suffering from a spider bite and didn't get any playing time. So, so I guess so the rust is showing just a little bit. Just a little. But, but am I? Am I still on now? You are still okay. on. I didn't want to. I didn't make sure you could hear me now. I can hear you now. And they were calling a timeout. So timeout, Screaming Devils, for their first time out of the half, a 9:02 left in the third quarter. Can you, Neil? I, I can hear you. I, okay, I can't hear you. Something happened to my headset. But while we have this timeout, I want to remind our viewers that um, that. Um, I want to remind them about something. The Americans, oh, I know what it was, the November 11th. That's, a, that's an important activity. Can, can you, you hear me now? Can you hear me? He can't hear me, folks. I, I, well, I don't know if you can hear me or not, Neil, but I can hear you well. Okay. All right, well, well I can't hear myself, but on uh, November the 11th, the American Legion Post 194 has its Veterans Day program at the Lincoln County Courthouse at 11 a.m. Lieutenant Colonel Gerald Lawson, retired, will be the guest speaker. Our very own Lincoln County High School Band and the Harlem ROTC Color Guard will be there participating. Come out for that patriotic event. Okay, the screaming devil quarterback back to pass, didn't have anybody to throw it to, and scramble forward, gained about three, three or four yards, bring up a second down play in about six. And we are currently experiencing some technical difficulties from Bruce's. Okay, I think I got it straight now, Neil. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. I hope, you, I hope everybody's still with us. I, I don't know if my... Well, I don't know what's going on, Neil, but, but anyway, um, back to the action. Handoff to number 24, and he is shoestring tackled by number 79, Dante Norman. Dante is one that went on, uh, that's not in there every play. I had to look for his name. Sorry, Dante. But third down now and five yards to go inside the 30. And the Screaming Devils back up to the line with wide out to the left. He's back to throw the ball again, or he's rolling to the right and gains about five yards and very close to a Screaming Devil first down. Just short. Third and about one. Just short. How short, Neil? About one. About one. Neil, the Lincoln County Office of Emergency Services offers the first aid class at 6 p.m. on November the 30th. You must pre-register. The cost is $10, and you should call the, uh, the Ambulance Service or Emergency Services Office for more information on that. Fourth down play here, fourth and one. Quarterback takes the ball. He hands off two. He's running back. Didn't get the number, but it appears that he has gained enough for a screaming devil first down. Maybe not, depending on the mark. The near side official has it marked right about the 25, and he needs to make the 24 or near the 24. So I believe it's going to be Red Devil ball. And they're going to call a timeout, and they're going to give the ball to the Red Devils. First down, just inside the 25-yard line. Neil, you know the holidays in Old Lincoln Town Festival is coming up on November the 22nd. Uh, it begins at 12 noon and goes to 8 p.m. That's when we have all the activities in town, the, the uh, food vendors, crafters, uh, the performers, dancers, and singers, and all that stuff. And the big event uh, begins at 4 p.m., which is the holiday parade. That's November the 22nd. Okay, wide ass to both sides, hand off up the middle to Josh Beard. He gains about two yards. Second down and about eight. Yeah, Bruce, I got some city folks from up in North Georgia coming down to enjoy our holidays in Lincoln Town again you, this year. I, you told me that, and you told me they had been before, and they really enjoyed it. Well, if you're going to give me a second, I'm going to see if I can swap controls in, see if I'll work a little better. Okay, I'll try to you cover for me here. Cover for you there for just a minute. Second down and about eight yards to go. The Red Devils back up to the line, wide outs to the both sides. Single back in the backfield. And timeout. 
I don't know why we have a timeout right now, but the officials are conferring that we have a penalty on the play. Illegal procedure against the Red Devil. Back them up. It's going to be second down and about 13. Neil, I, I, I don't know if you can hear me. I can, I can hear you I, very well. I think I got a bad person. cable. Give me one more second. All righty. Clark, back to throw. He's got time to throw. He throws out to Stephen Brown, who turns a little bit late, and the ball was uh, out thrown about a yard ahead of him. Clark was pressured just a little bit that time. He might have had to release the ball a little bit quick. So it's going to be third down now in about 13 for the Red Devils. And wide outs to both sides. Clark is back to throw the ball. He throws it out to Chris Kreit, and Chris breaks one tackle, and up to about the 40. The flag on the play looks like from here, I, I think there's a flag. He's up to about the 42-yard line, which will be a first down, pending the outcome of the flag. There is no flag. There must be a towel or something laying on the field on the far side. So Red Devil first down at or about the 40, excuse me, the 36-yard line. Well, Neil, I don't know if I'm back. Can you hear me? Bruce, I can hear you, but you're not coming through real clear. Well, real I'm not real clear anyway. I'm sort of confused. Uh, pass out Stephen Brown, and he breaks one tackle and funnels the ball, and it is covered by the Screaming Devils at the 47-yard line. It will be first down. Screaming Devils at the 47-yard line. All right, Neil, I think I'm back now. I got a short. Well, Bruce, I can barely hear you, but You can't hear me. I can hear me good. You can hear you good? What? Are you on A or B? How about now? Can you I hear can me hear better? You now. Yes, All right. We, we're on the same page now, Neil. All right. All right. And there's a flag. Now we got a flag. We have flagged and flagged and flagged and flagged. I wish I'd been keeping up with how many, but it's been a passel of them. How many is a passel, Neil? Well, that's more than we uh, have kept up with. How about that? Irregardless. It's been too many. <laughs> it has been well, too many. Well, my cord has a tangle in it, but I'm not going to worry about it. My well, hair gets tangled up sometime when I shampoo it. I don't know if you have that trouble. Both of them, huh? But it, yeah, both of them, they get tangled. All right, uh, first and five for the Screaming Devils, and he is sacked back at the 50-yard line, 49-yard line, for a loss on the play of about six. It's going to bring him second down and 11. And there is another flag, believe that or not. I, I, I can't believe it, Neil. Jarris win number 58 in on that sack, along with another Red Devil defender. And they are having a zebra meeting. And now they're walking back toward the Red Devils, and they're going to mark it off. Don't know what it was yet. You know, while we are uh, getting back underway in the second half and they're marking this penalty off, I want to once again remind our viewers that this broadcast is made possible by the city and county governments of Lincoln County, the Lincoln County Chamber of Commerce, the Lincoln County Development Authority, and with the special help and cooperation of the Lincoln County High School Technology Department. We also want to thank Coach Mark Flowers for all his help. We want to thank Ginger Marlowe, who is the coordinator for these broadcasts. And now back to Neil in action. Well, uh Pitch to uh, handoff number 24. He goes around the right side. He's met by Josh Beard as well as Drum Long. And let me get my glasses on. As well as other Red Devils on that play. Neil, I also want to thank Comcast Cable Systems, who provides this local channel for us on the city system, and the Galaxy Cable System, who provides the county system. And I don't want you to ask me about the county system. I won't ask you about the county system. But we're closer than we have been. You're closer than you was last time I asked you. Well, maybe by the playoffs, <laughs> we will be able to broadcast this uh, wonderful sport countywide as far as the lines reach. 
We want to be just like the, uh, what was it, the Atlanta Journal. We want to cover Dixie like the do. We will try. Third down and 11. For the Screaming Devils. And from the shotgun, I think from maybe the first time tonight, quarterback back to throw the ball. He throws out and it is complete to number 82, and he is brought down immediately by number three, Chris Kite. And number 25, Raquino Mickens. And Neil, our halftime activities with the Homecoming Corps preempted our normal band show by our Lincoln County Pride, the Lincoln County High School Red Devil and Middle School Marching Band. And it was also announced that they participated in a band festival in Hartwell over the weekend and placed there. I'm sorry that I can't remember and tell you exactly what award they won, but I'm sure they did a wonderful job as they have been doing here all season long. Well, I tell you what, they are, they are uh, I nominate them for the most improved band in Lincoln County because they, they have been excellent. Uh, uh, Jasper Dukes has done an excellent job. And there is an option play pitch to number 24 goes off the right side for a touchdown. And Warren County has scored three touchdowns on our defense. You know, Warren County uh, has got, they got us screaming, Neil. They, they sure do. We'll be the screaming devils for this thing over with if they keep up. I on. thought Warren County used to be the blue devils. I know that they are, their colors are blue and gold, uh, maybe. But uh, I think back way, back way long, long years ago in the olden days when you were in high school, I thought they were the blue devils. <laughs> Uh, they very well may have been. And in more recent years, when I went to school, they changed to the Screaming Devil. <laughs> yeah, the next year. <laughs> All right, we have a flag on the play. Imagine that. Illegal participation on the Screaming Devils, and it will back them up five yards. And they will kick a slightly longer extra point attempt. And this quarter has gone by rather fast. Two minutes and 57 seconds left. Our first two quarters moved a little slow, Neil. This one is uh, progressing right along. And, Bruce, we were very close to the mercy rule. Where that, oh, and it is blocked by number 25, Mickens. So the score will remain Lincoln County 41, Warren County 20. But we were real close to the 30-point mercy rule at halftime until that long pass and eventual score. I was in the end zone, and I think the guy got in on the long run when the ball was thrown to him. He, I mean, I was looking right at it, and uh, and they put it right on they the, put it right the goal line. line. Right on the goal. But I agree with you from this vantage point. It looked like, and we'll we'll the, we'll the tail of the tape. We'll see where the tape shows. <laughs> All right, so the Screaming Devils have put up 20 points on us in less than the first three quarters. We have not had a point scored prior to tonight in the first three quarters, except for last week at Aquinas. So they are record setters tonight. And they are lined up for a short pooch type kick taken by number nine, C.J. Norman. And he returns the ball to about five yards to the 37, 38-yard line. Bruce, I have a, I smell something. I, I did too. I thought I was on fire, Neil, but it's the heater, I think, back here. It's has either been turned off or on or it's burned up or the building may be on fire. We'll call Michael Wingrow and Marion Acock. And they'll, yeah. I wonder how they'll get here. <laughs> I don't know. They still got that little red truck. And, okay, <laughs> they can come in here. Yeah. But Coach Acock is on the sidelines, I'm sure. Very busy. He's a, he's a, a great uh, help to our program here, really an unsung hero. He does so much that folks don't know about and getting ready. All right, pitch to number one. Searles goes off the left side. He's got some running room, and there's a flag down, believe that or not. He goes all the way down inside the 30. There are three flags in a row, just like the three little pigs there along the 40-yard line. And that's usually bad news. It really is, Neil. And I, I was going to say Larry Moen Curley. <laughs> but I, I'm not referring to the referees. Well, we don't even know those guys. <laughs> no. And 
But I was talking about Coach Acock. He, he really does so much that folks don't know about. He's an unsung hero. He does so much to help prepare for these games, getting the field ready, getting the equipment ready, being on the sidelines, encouraging the guys. He uh, uh, is a middle school, high school, middle school football coach. Um, really does a fine job. In addition to being uh, a, a, a great instructor in his department here at Lincoln County High School and also many, many years being our volunteer fire chief. Well, you know, Coach Haycock was, uh, was nominated and inducted into some group. He, so, uh, uh, on Johnny Walton's website, the uh, Heroes, uh, whatever they call it, as well as another uh, honor from Channel 6 or Channel 12 last year. That's uh, right. And I don't recall what that was, but he's very deserving. And we have flags flying everywhere, and the Red Devils are pointing, and I believe the tempers are flaring just a little bit. So, we will let them sort this out. Hold the phone. They used to say that. It was some... some hold the phone, yeah. Yeah, somebody used to say that. But we'll say it. Hold, hold the phone. Hold the phone. That might be our new deal. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. I think it was the, you're talking about Coach Acock, I think it was the Channel 12 Giving Your Best Award, maybe. Absolutely. And he certainly Absolutely. does give his best. And that is a big one, a 15-yard penalty. Puts us down through the 46-and-a-half-yard line of the Screaming Devils. And maybe we're on the march here with 217 in this third quarter. We've got wide outs to both sides. Two men in the backfield, Jennings and Searles. And he comes around the right side. He cuts out. He just can't get away from that number 83. And he loses about five yards in the play. So it'll be second down and nearly 15. Warren County is really playing better than a two-win they were really playing better than a two-win win team, aren't they? Yes, sir, they are. Okay, second and 15. Wide outs to both sides. Jennings and Searles through the backfield. And hand off to uh, fake to Searles and Clark back to throw the ball and he guns the ball down. Overthrowing number 44. Draw them long. So, it will be third down now and 15. I thought he was throwing it to Stephen Brown the way it barreled out of there in the hill. And, uh, that was kind of reminiscent of that touchdown throw in the first half where he overthrew one guy and hit the other one in stride. So, we need to get 15 yards on this play. To Clark has got to get back in his groove now. Twins left. Tight end formation on the right. Clark is back and he has been pressured hard. And he gets away and throws the ball out to Drum Long, who catches the ball at the 25 and goes all the way down in there for a touchdown. And the Red Devils have taken the ball. Have taken the ball all the way in for a touchdown. And that carries the score to 47. And Neil, that's just another example of what we were talking about earlier about this quarterback reacting well under pressure as he was in that play and uh, the receivers being there where they needed to be. And the Devils line up for a uh, kick attempt with Beard. Offsides, or excuse me, uh, illegal procedure or motion on the Red Devils. They're going to back it up five yards. Beard's got plenty of leg to get it that far. So uh, I'm assuming they're going to kick it again. Snap, hold, kick, and... He rolled it up through the line. 
So the goal will remain Red Devils 47 in Warren County 20. A minute and seven seconds to go in the third quarter. Neil, if we'd have had some bowling pins lined up, I believe it would have been a strike. Yeah, I think so. But unfortunately, it was not what we were looking for. But the Red Devils still ahead with a little more than a minute remaining in the third quarter. Score 47, Lincoln County 20, Screaming Devils. Neil, the holiday decoration gala will be on December the 8th. The judging begins at 6 p.m. And I, and I think you need to call ahead if you want to participate in that so your home will be judged. I've got to do a lot of work on mine in order to get it judged. Um, but you can call the Welcome Center at 359-7970 and get more information on that. Okay. Kickoff. Goes down inside the 20 and is dropped. And number 24 takes a ball around the left there and gains about five or six yards on the return. George Beard and uh, I didn't see who else was in on that stop, Neil. Maybe you did. I did not. Well, I'm trying to pay a little better attention, Neil. I'm, I'm, I've got um, ADD or whatever it is. Attention yeah. deficit. They I got medicine for that. I understand that. From the shotgun, and quarterback is pressured and brought down by number 58. Jerry's win uh, kind of a delayed effect. He hit the quarterback and he stumbled a little bit and then fell. So second down and 15. For the Screaming Devils. If you think it'll help, I, wait a minute, Neil, my cord is shortened again, but if I was going to say if you think it'll help, I'll give you some of my medicine. <laughs> I've got to drive home. All right, hand off to number 24 from the shotgun and win again. That rhymes every time. But win again and another loss of about four or five. It's going to be third down now and... Third down at about 17, 16, 17 to go. And still in the shotgun formation. And that's the end of the third quarter. With the Red Devils holding a 27 point advantage. Scores 47 to 20. And Neil, you were talking about the mercy rule. I think that's something that has been just recently adopted. That's just, that is correct. Uh, the Georgia High School Association uh, voted on that recently uh, and adopted that rule, which is a good rule. It, it, it is. Uh, we saw an example, I believe it was with uh, Athens Christians, I believe, believe, where we cut to shorter quarters. And, and actually, uh, I believe last week at Aquinas, we ran the clock. Uh, that, yeah. There are several things that... Uh, different scenarios for that rule. Uh, one is at halftime, one is in the third quarter. Uh, Neil, also on December the 6th, I want to tell you that the Lincoln County Historical Society will have that candlelight tour of homes that begins at 6 p.m. and runs through 9 p.m. It features the Groves May House and a lot of other historic and beautiful homes in our community. And uh, I'm not sure who you can call about that, but I'm sure you can call the Chamber of Commerce and they can put you in touch with whoever you need to talk to to find out how to get tickets for that and participate in that and, and get in the holiday spirit. All right, the Devils have third down and about 17. Quarterback is back to throw it. And he is being pressured by Drum Long and just throws the ball away, and I'm surprised they didn't throw an intentional grinding on him on that. But we have a flag have to deal with. on that play, Neil. Neil, also on December the 6th, um, the Christmas program at Elijah Clark State Park will take place. That's Christmas Carol sung by the Camp Fire, uh, storytelling, story as well as a candlelight tour of the park. And uh, that's a fun event. I've had opportunities to go to that a couple of times, and it's a real good event to take your family to and get in the holiday spirit. Okay, Bruce, fourth down now in about 17. We've got uh, 
Traveris Stokes back at about the 50-yard line. And good high kick. It's going to come down about the 50, and Stokes catches the ball. And he goes in, has some running room, got a lane down the side. And he will take it in to the house for a 51-yard touchdown or, or punt return for a touchdown. Yeah, we've seen some, some, some run backs. You know, Bruce, he didn't have any room. <laughs> he made room. He made, I mean, he just he ran around right that lane there. He had good blocking ahead of him. And, and you know, Neil, uh, we've said time and time again, and we'll say it again, is that we call these guys' names out that are running the ball and that make tackles, but oftentimes we, we miss calling the guys that are making the holds, that are doing the blocking. And it's really a team effort. It takes all these guys in, in order to, uh, to get these points on the board. And it looks like we're going to go for two. I don't understand why, but we are. Well, Neil, sometimes we're not meant to understand. We just... Wide outs to both sides. Clark at quarterback. He drops back. Throw is being pressured. Throws right over the middle to Drum Long, who caught the ball for a two-point conversion. So that makes the score now 55 for the Red Devils and 20 for the Screaming Devils of Warren County. 11 minutes and 37 seconds remain in the game. And Neil, we can see our fans here, and I'm sure we can't find Raleigh Jr., but I'm sure he's got that big grin on his face. Yeah, just look for the hat. For the hat and the teeth. That's the cat in the hat. <laughs> well, Bruce, I'm standing out here on the porch. The weather is very nice. Well, Neil, I would come out there and join you, but I've uh, taken back over our camera duty here. Our camera operator had to take a little break. I don't know if it was a nature call or <laughs> had to call his girlfriend or one or the other. Had to call home or, or just wanted to go enjoy the night. Okay, and for the, I don't know, seventh or eighth time here, the Red Devils will kick off. Rex Reed is the, having the honors as kicker. We're going to see what his uncle taught him. Yep. And a fairly good kick down to about the 20-yard line. It's taken by number 40, who cuts around to the left side. He's got a little bit of running room, and his feet come out from under him. So he returned the kick there about 15 yards. It's going to be first down on the 35 for the Screaming Devils. Neil, we're going to have to talk to Flowers about getting us some repair of new headsets. Well, uh, we have uh, headsets that are in the repair shop now, bro. Oh, okay, good. And good. We, they, we will need them. They are four years old, but we the, want them company, out, the company has agreed to do it under warranty. So, Well, we certainly want to thank them. We will more than likely have them. Whoever they are, they are come. They are good folks. Time out on the field. Red Devils. And they will have one timeout remaining. Well, Neil, while we have this timeout, I want to remind our viewers about uh, the annual breakfast with our legislatures. That's coming up on December the 14th. From It starts at 8 a.m. and goes to 10 a.m. It's sponsored by the Lincoln, the Lincoln County Chamber of Commerce. You can purchase your tickets from any chamber director, or you can go to the chamber office and get those. And we've said over and over again that's a great opportunity for us to come together as a community and meet with our representatives in the state and federal government and make our views known to them about what we think is important and what we want them to do. They may not do it, but at least they'll know what we think. They will hear from their constituents, whether they listen they or do. not is another and, thing. And also, uh, the, uh, the other good thing about it is those good uh, eggs and ham biscuits and good coffee. And that will probably be more productive than the conversation. <laughs> Was that ugly to say that? Well, they always, I think, are responsive, but uh, maybe not as good as the ham biscuits. Okay, throw a pass out to number 83 for a first down, first down yardage, about 12-yard gain on the play. So it'll be first down now at the 47-yard line. Neil, I want to zoom in on across the field on our friends, 
Doug Newman and Bruce Turner. Bruce Turner back from a uh, whirlwind trip. Well, I guess that you get back to the action. And the tackle made that time by the uh, official. Uh, brought down at the 50-yard line. <laughs> he ran right into it. You know they, those officials, we gripe and fuss and complain about them, but, but they, they got a hard job. They do have they a tough job. They do. And they're underpaid from what I understand. As we all are. And I think we've seen a few that were under-trained as well. <laughs> Maybe a few pay too much. The yeah, quarterback is uh, scrambling and he ends up gaining about three yards. It'll bring up a third down play. Uh, Neil, I was, uh, I was taking our viewers away from the action and interrupting you to mention about Bruce Turner and Doug Newman. And um, we want to remind our viewers that each and every week they bring you the action. If you can't attend the game, they bring it to you live on WXKT. That's 100.1. That's the Washington George radio station. And be sure and tune in on that. Handoff to number 24 goes around the left side for what appears to be first down yardage. At about the 43-yard line. So the Devils, Screaming Devils, are driving a little here. And, of course, in addition to the fine job you do here, Neil, you do substitute with them from time to time, as you did last week, and did an excellent job. Just had a big time, Doug and I. Carrying on up there. Quarterback was back to throw and he was pressured and then he got loose and he ended up gaining about three yards on the play. He's brought down by number 40, Josh Beard. He's going to bring up second down and about seven. Gilly and myself can't ever agree on the yardage, Bruce. Uh, Gilly and I disagree a lot too sometimes, like on the balance of my note and things. But generally, he's always right, Neil. I don't know about calling the, the what down, I mean, what yard we own and how many we got to go. All right, handoff number 15 and a fumble on the play, and the quarterback falls right back on top of it. And Josh Beard fell right on top of the quarterback. I know that was pleasant. But Gil has the uh, help of that computer up there at the bank, you see. He, he but, does. Uh, he does. Computers. They're only as smart as the people pushing the buttons, right? In fact, machines, they've ruined this country. I agree. But what would we do without them? We can take back a lot of trips to the file cabinets with them. That's true. Okay, from the shotgun again, handoff number 15 gets about a yard. It's going to be fourth down now and about 10 yards. Tackle made by number 79, John B. Norman. Fourth down, 11 to go. Dante Norman, number 79, in on that tackle. Less than eight minutes to go now in the game. Still in the shotgun. And Davis breaks through and hits the quarterback, and it's intercepted almost. Intercepted by number three, Chris Kreit, and then deflected into nearly into the hands of number 11, Stephen Brown. So now it's the Red Devils' ball. First and 10 on about the 44-yard line. We're still playing with what looks to be mostly a first unit offense. And uh, y'all can probably hear our band in the background. Sounding good. Clark back to throw. Scrambles a little bit. Works out to his right and throws the ball over and is nearly caught. One handed by Chris Kreit, but incomplete. Bring up second down there and still 10. A little more than seven minutes remaining in this ball game now. And a little bit of confusion there on the, in the huddle, but I think they got it straightened out with Stokes in and drawn along out. Well, Neil, me and you know about confusion, confusion, don't we? 
Clark, a little screen type pass. Clark throws off to Jennings, number two, and he rolls out for a first down inside the 45 to the 43 yard line of the Screaming Devils. The clock stops now with seven minutes and six seconds to go. And Jennings come up with a little limp that time. Neil, I mentioned the holiday parade and activities earlier. And I may not have time to do this now, so I'll just do it later. Let's get back to the football action. Okay, first and 10. Trips to the right. Single back in the backfield in Jennings. Clark back to throw. And he is being pressured and is sacked back uh, inside the 50, or uh, on the other side of the 50 to about the 46-yard line. Big sack of nearly, nearly... 12 yards. So that got away from him just a little bit. Just a little bit. And trips left this time. And Clark back to throw. He's got some scrambling room and he throws long and hard and out of the reach of CJ Norman, number nine. Third down in about 20, give or take. Tell you one. Neil, what I was going to tell you earlier uh, is that another thing that we broadcast in addition to these football games is the holiday parade. And one thing that we do uh, did last year and we plan to do this year that's pretty neat is that we take a camera throughout the day and we go around to all the activities that are going on in town and we videotape all the people that are in town and if you see the camera, just wave at it and you might see yourself on TV. Okay, third down and real long pitch back to number one, Sto uh, excuse me, Searles who gains about 10 or 11 yards and it's going to bring up a fourth down play. And we'll see here whether or not we'll kick it, kick the ball or, or go for it. It's going to be fourth down and about eight. And it looks like maybe we're going to go for it. Less than five and a half minutes now in the game. Wide outs to both sides, pitch to Searles coming around the left this time, and he has a little bit of running room. There's a flag thrown in on the play. I don't know what that was about. We'll know in just a moment. Hopefully it was on the Screaming Devils. We hope so, Neil. These flags have really been flying tonight. It's on the Red Devils. And I'm sure they'll decline that penalty and take the ball. Our defense is meandering onto the field. And Neil, while that's taking place, we see in our monitor now, our stadium announcer, Gil Madison, that we've been uh, scandalizing earlier, <laughs> along with his spotter, it looks like maybe Fred Ingram is up there helping him out. Maybe that's the reason he's having so much difficulty. Could be getting bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Fred, Fred is a good guy. He sure is. And, and That was a disclaimer on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the views expressed here are not necessarily the views of this station. And I guarantee you, if you can't take a joke, better not listen to us. Better not listen to us. <laughs> First and ten. And from the shotgun, the quarterback back, he's been, he, he was brought down by number 58, Jarris Wynn, for a sack back inside the 30-yard line. And all this quiet time is quiet time, I guess. It's, uh, yes. Meditation. Meditation. Shotgun formation flags down. Imagine that. It's probably going to be offside, or excuse me, uh, illegal procedure or motion on the Screaming Devil. So now it's going to be second down in 25 or so. And I expect to see him throw the ball. 
I expect so. And being pressured again, he's got it. He's got plenty of running room this time, and he is forced out of bounds by C.J. Norman, number nine, at about the 40-yard line. To bring up third down, still, oh, nearly eight yards for a first down. Clock still running with three minutes and 43 seconds. Neil, we, we've talked about before our Lincoln County High School Drama Department and some of the productions they've done. Uh, Graceland, they just had last night uh, bourbon and laundry and something. they got one coming up in December I'm going to tell you about in just a minute. Handoff number 24, he tries to get around the left side, but he has no luck in that. He's brought down by Belafonte Davis, Josh Beard, and Deontay Norman. I hope I'm saying his name right. I believe you are, Neil. Uh, I was talking about our drama department, and they're doing a, they're doing a good job. In, in, in December, I believe it's December 12th, and maybe the 13th, they're presenting the best Christmas pageant ever. And that's really a funny show if you hadn't seen it. And I'm sure they'll do a good job with it. And we'll have more information on that as the uh, time gets closer. All right, and the kick it goes off and out of bounds near the 40-yard line. The 37 to be exact. So it'll be first down Red Devils. Two minutes and 44 seconds remaining. And still playing our primary or our first unit. Those guys really need some playing time. To get these cobwebs shook off. Well, and Neil, and the Screaming Devils have done a good job. Both teams have played well, but, but you can't have a wonder if some of these players, that uh, the, the number of players that we ha have out as a result of injuries has, hasn't affected this game tonight. Mickens up the middle for short yardage. And also in backfield that time was number five, Nicholas Freeman. So we do have a few extra extras in right now. I see Joseph Wells, number 66. Josh Beard, number 30, in the game. Check and see if he lost the keys now. I was reaching for my pocket. All right, Clark back to throw the ball. He's been pressured again and throws into and is caught by number 30. Josh Wimbush inside the Screaming Devils territory. So it'll be first down Red Devils. So we've got a minute and 42 seconds to punch it in one more time. Let's see what happens. Bruce, I know you hate post-it notes, don't you? I, I hate a post-it note. <laughs> but I guess I have that. Pitch to Freeman. He goes around the right side with some room to run and is out of bounds. At or around the 40-yard line. So it's going to bring up second down. At about the 41. And Neil, don't forget about that special ceremony after the game tonight. We don't want to give away what it is. Hopefully we're going to be able to bring it to our viewers. Well, I can't give away something I don't have, and I don't know what it's going to be. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. It's top secret. Top secret. We're going to keep the film rolling, though, huh? All right, pitch to Searles, number one, coming around the left side, and gets caught down around the ankles and brought down for about a two-yard loss. 